welcome back. So, if you recall in the last lecture we had uh, introduced the concept of substitutional conduction before that we had gone through the derivation of the IDVD relation in a MOSFET and also I explained the effect of substrate bias. I told you that with appropriate substrate bias which is always negative with respect to the source you can manipulate or you can tailor the threshold voltage of the device according to your need. So, that is an additional knob or additional you know factor that you can take into account the effect of substrate bias on threshold voltage. There is a beautiful expression for that simple expression that shows you that the threshold voltage shift goes roughly as the square root of the uh, you know the, the substrate backside voltage you are applying right. In the end of the lecture last lecture we had told I told you that there is a substitutional conduction. Substitutional conduction is the conduction when where which happens when the device has not reached strong inversion. So, weak inversion sort of a transport and if you plot transfer characteristics which is I d versus V g then on a linear scale you will not see that because you will on a linear scale you will only see the current above the threshold voltage below the threshold voltage the current will seem like 0. On a log scale you will see that below the threshold actually the current is rising by many orders of magnitude from like pico or nano amps to micro and milli amps that range of current is not visible on a linear scale. So, on a log scale you can see that. So, the sub threshold slope is the slope of the I d V g there and the sharper that slope is it means lower voltage you need to turn on and off the channel by many orders of magnitude which eventually define the zeros and ones of your digital logic the channel being on is 1 the channel being off is 0 right. So, digital logic millions and billions of such, such MOSFETs are there in your cell phone that you are using now. So, if your slope sub threshold slope is large I mean if the sub threshold slope is not steep that means you have to apply a larger voltage on the gate to be able to get the threshold voltage or to able to get the on off ratio that you require which means the battery will drain more power in your cell phone or your laptop or whatever to actually make the digital logic work. So, you need steep sub threshold de slope devices where the sub threshold slope is very steep which means you are able to turn on off the channel very sharply. So, at very low difference of gate voltage you are able to do that which means your battery will have to supply lower voltage to get the same functionality in your logic circuits that means you will be able to operate much more efficiently ok. So, that is why sub threshold slope is a very important parameter, but you will see that unfortunately sub threshold slope in a MOSFET has a fundamental limit that you cannot exceed ok. So, the best devices will be have to will have to work at that limit ok. So, let us come back to the slide here where we had left if you recall this was the slide that we had talked about last time uh, maybe I will erase some part of this here. Uh, so, I told you that we will discuss sub threshold conduction again today here we will I will give you the expression for the limit of sub threshold conduction and then we will go to short channel effects and some of the some of the related aspects of MOSFET and we will try to wind up the lecture of MOSFET here ok. So, uh, sub threshold conduction happens in weak inversion mostly and also in depletion that is before weak inversion has happened. Um, in sub threshold conduction because the channel charge is very very low your drift transport is negligible because you know your drift depends on q mu n times field if this charge n is very very low because it is a sub threshold then your current I d is primarily diffusion current and the diffusion current will therefore depend this I d will depend exponentially to band bending the bending on the surface which is like q psi s by k t this psi s is the band bending if you remember this is the MOSFET diagram no this band bending that happens no this band bending that happens that is psi s. So, essentially I d is a diffusion current which will depend exponentially on the the band bending and the sub threshold slope will tell you how sharply that drain current changes with gate voltage and it is a critical parameter in low power application. So, the sub threshold slope actually is defined this slope you know is defined as the inverse of this how the drain current is changing with respect to the gate voltage, but the slope will the inverse of it actually. So, essentially your uh, it should be a smaller quantity if it is a smaller quantity is better which means you know there should be a large change in the drain current with a very small change in the gate voltage below threshold below threshold ok this is all below threshold below threshold there should be a large change in the drain current for a very small change in the gate voltage I repeated that sentence ok. That means this quantity will become very small and that is a better device a steeper device ok a steeper device and this I d this is inverse by the way this I d by V g can be written as d I d by d uh, psi of s which is the band bending 
into d psi of s by d v g whole thing minus 1. So, this quantity the drain current changing with this band bending is essentially the field transport factor you can say ok. It is actually the field transport factor. So, when the you know there is a, if you look at the source this is the channel and this is the source then you have this electrons that you are injecting right. So, how much is the drain current with respect to the band bending that is happening this quantity is captured by this and this how much is the band bending with respect to the gate voltage you are applying this is the gate voltage. So, any small change in the gate voltage that you are applying what is the rate at which you are changing the band bending with respect to the gate voltage that is essentially uh, a capacitive coupling it is a it is basically a capacitive coupling it is an interplay of capacitance across the gate capacitance and the depletion capacitance. So, a small change in the gate voltage that you are applying here will change the band bending. So, what is the rate at which the band bending is changing with respect to the gate voltage that you are applying that is called a capacitive coupling uh, that is actually manifestation of the capacitive coupling between the gate and the channel that is here. So, these two terms will give you this sub pressure slope and you can this expression can be derived this diffusion expression and this mathematics can be worked out in a simplistic way we are, we are not deriving it here I will show you the eventual expression ok if you do that what will happen ok. So, let me show you some printed figures so that will give you a better idea these figures are from SMZ the textbook which also I will put up on the list uh, this is not my figure this is figure from SMZ. So, you see on a linear scale below threshold it is almost 0 but on a log scale you will see that the current rises by many orders of magnitude here ok. So, let me use the laser pointer again here. So, you can see that the below the threshold the threshold was at 0 0.3 volt around here here the slope changes this this is actually this ok below that the slope changes and this dramatic decrease or the increase you can say this huge increase from many orders of magnitude happens at a very small range of like minus 0 0.1 volt to 0 0.3 volt which is only 0.4 volt candor you know you have so much of change that is the substitutional swing and it is called the substitutional swing or the substitutional slope ok. The inverse of the substitutional slope is essentially the substitutional swing and it so happens that this expression the substitutional slope is given by this quantity if you do that maths I had explained in the previous slide uh, the capacitive coupling times the rate at which the, the drain current is changing at the band bending then you get an expression like this ln of 10 this comes because some of some conversion from log to linear log scale to nature log and log base 10 and so on. So, it is a ln of 10 ok into k t by q which is the thermal energy 0 0.026 electron volt at room temperature into 1 plus C d by C ox C d is the depletion capacitance. C d is the depletion capacitance if you recall the capacitance in the depletion region of the semiconductor because the bands are bending to the depletion C ox is the oxide capacitance. The best that you can have this quantity you want this quantity to be as low as possible by the way that means it will be a very sharp transistor or sharp on and off. So, the best that you can have is that this quantity I don't know indeed in the bracket can be 1 which means this quantity can be very very less than 1. If this quantity is very very less than 1 then that is the best case scenario you will have where this quantity is almost 1 because any other quantity will increase that you want this quantity to be as low as possible. So, the lowest value you can get when you ignore this that is the best case you can get when you ignore this the best you will get is 60 millivolt per decade approximately what does 60 millivolt per decade it means it means one decade of change of current one decade means one order of magnitude of change in current one order of magnitude or one decade change in current from this is say 10 to the power minus 11 this is say 10 to the power minus 10. So, this is one order this is 10 to the minus 10, this is 10 to the minus 9. So, this is one order 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 8, this is one order. So, for 1 1 order of magnitude of change in current, each each order of magnitude, you have to change the voltage by 60 60 millivolt. So, every time you go from 10 to minus 1 order 10 to minus 10 to 10 to minus 9, you have to drop here 60 millivolt. You go from 10 to minus 9 to 10 to minus 8, you have to go 60 millivolt. 10 to minus 8 to 10 to minus 6, you have to do 120 millivolt 60 again 60 because 2 order right. So, for example, if I want to go from 10 to the minus 11 here, so to the 10 to the minus 6 here, here which is a 5 order magnitude change from 10 to the minus 11 to 10 to the minus 6, this is a 5 order magnitude change of current here, which means you have and this is this is you know it will go linearly in that way, it is a log scale linear I am talking about. So, if you change this by 5 order magnitude 10 to the minus 11. 2 10 to minus 6 which is a 5 order magnitude change then on the x axis you have to drop the gate voltage by 5 into 60 which is 0 0.3 volt that means a change of 0 0.3 volt on the gate voltage here will lead to a 5 order magnitude change in the drain current 
and that is the best case scenario. If your capacitance in the, this quantity becomes slightly comparable to 1, then this will even become worse. This will become 70, 80, 100 milli electron volt and millivolt and so on. That means, you will have to drop more voltage to have the same increase in the current per decade matlab if you have instead of 60 you have 100 millivolt per decade it means for one order magnitude change in the current you have to change the gate voltage by 0.1 volt so that will entail more charge more draining of the charge from a battery for example right on your devices so you want this quantity to be small if for example this was 10 millivolt per decade hypothetically speaking that means every one order of increase in the current you only drop 10 millivolt 10 millivolt how beautiful that would be by the time you go from 10 millivolt to 50 millivolt, you will drop 4 orders of magnitude. That is beautiful, right? But unfortunately, there is a limit to this subtracer slope in a MOSFET because this is a this is a classic, you know, temperature dependent transport. This is a Boltzmann transport sort of a thing. So that's why you have this limit, and you cannot exceed this limit of 60 millivolt per decade. You can at best get this limit. You cannot get better than this. Okay? The best of the best devices, no matter how much you scale the device, no matter what kind of geometry you use in a MOSFET you will be able to only get maximum a uh, best case scenario of 60 millivolt per decade that is the slope you will get and that is the, 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 the voltage that you have to apply. So, for example, if I want to increase the current by 6 order magnitude then 6 into 60 0 0.36 0 0.360 vo 0 0.36 volt so I have to draw from the battery that is what it means. Okay. So, this sub threshold slope is very important and remember this slope is only valid below threshold above threshold this is the different slope this is this which does not count, this is a substitution slope. Okay. So, now because MOSFETs have this problem, so there are new kinds of device architectures, although not adopted in the commercial you know, application in industry, but there are new new sort of devices that people are trying to use to overcome this limit, okay, to overcome this limit. For example, <coughs> because this is a Boltzmann type of transport, you have this limit of 60 millivolt per decade. But in some cases, there is also people are also using tunneling sort of transistor. In tunneling transistor, what happens is that you do not have this thermionic, uh, you know, like a Boltzmann sort of a transport, and your off and on state of the transistor can be defined by the tunneling probability. You know, tunneling happens when you have a very thin barrier of a material, and electron here can actually tunnel through the barrier here. So, by tailoring that, you can actually block that current, and you will have an on off ratio, and the tunneling current the tunneling phenomena does not depend on the Boltzmann transport this kind of a sub threshold will not limit it. So, in tunneling transport you can get much lower than this you can get 30 millivolt per decade for example, even lower I forgot the best number, but in tunneling transport you can get much lower number and so these are steep these are called steep sub threshold slope transistor it is a very hot area of research there is also negative capacitance uh, transistors I will not come to that here in this course. Uh, but there are other kinds of transistors like negative capacitor transistors and then there is a tunneling transistors this is called TFET tunneling field effect transistor which are widely being investigated for a long time now research and academia industry they are using this to actually try to demonstrate much better sub threshold slope. But as far as I understand this tunneling transistors or the cheap, cheap threshold trans, sub threshold transistor this is a much uh, this negative capacitance transistors are much more newer and so those are still there undergoing research. But tunneling transistors have been around for some time in research and academia industry, but the tunneling transistors have not been employed in uh, large scale in commercial devices in cell phones laptops and all uh, because the on current of this tunneling transistor is low. You do not only need a very steep sub threshold slope here you also need the on current to be respectably high. The on current has to be high for better current drive. This, this tunneling transistors will give you what it will, it will give you, you know, I will tell you. It will give you a better, it will give you a much steeper slope, but the current will be very low. So, your slope will be very fast, by much better. So, it will be much better, but your total current, the output current eventually will be low. And because this is low, the current driving capability is low, uh, your GM gain and other things also low. But in digital logic also, you need a minimum drain current, otherwise you will have a lot of delay in the device. Okay? So, that is the problem. So, tunneling field effect transistors have a lot of promise, but the on current is not high, because in tunneling the current is not very high. So, although you get a better sub threshold slope like this, but your current is low actually. Okay? So, that is one reason why uh, you know it is not being used commercially as of now. Okay? So, uh, the things there. So, short channel effects finally, short channel effects come into picture when your MOSFET, you know, if you have a, a source, a drain, and this is the gate dielectric, then you have an ox the gate here, right? The gate here. Short channel effects come into picture when this length, this is the length of the channel, 
this length becomes very small this length becomes small and then what happens is that as you are shrinking the device you are shrinking the gate you are shrinking the distance you are doing everything you know it is called scaling that is called scaling scaling as in like you are scaling down the dimension your source drain spacing your gate oxide thickness your doping your all the geometry is being scaled down to you know make the devices smaller and smaller that you know following the Moose law. So, short channel effects come in when your length the device has become too small when I say too small I typically mean it is less than 1 micron or so even at 1 micron you might start getting it. So, less than 1 micron or so if it is long channel 5 micron 10 micron then you do not worry but if it is say less than 1 micron say you know uh, 0.5 micron and so on uh, 0.2 micron and so on very small devices then you have short channel effects which are essentially detrimental to the device which are bad to the device but you cannot avoid them because the source and the drain become very close to each other become very close to each other the all kinds of leakage that may happen the drain might be able to influence the channel current the channel current which was ideally uh, was supposed to saturate like this no because this is saturating because the drain voltage here is not having an effect but because this source and drain are coming very close in short channel devices you actually will not be able to get saturation because the drain also will now start influencing the, the current that is flowing. So, you will get something like this which is very bad right very bad. So, there are many phenomena associated with short channel effect uh, we will talk about scaling scaling actually is the process of you know scaling the device down. So, it is the process essentially it is not a short channel effect but short scaling enables you to go to smaller devices which will give you eventually small short channel effects. So, you have to get steps to overcome short channel effects. Then there is charge, charge sharing between source and drain this is one important thing when the source and drain come very close the depletion charge that is there no, around the source and drain the depletion charge the depletion charge will start getting shared between them that will lead to a lot of effect actually you will see. Then there is dribble and plunge through it is actually the drain induced barrier lowering that I was talking about the drain will start influencing the channels charge and so the what will happen is that the drain will start having a role to play to play a role in the current that is transporting here. So, your current will not saturate and then that is the you know on state but even below threshold you have something called punch through. So, these are bad effects that will happen and finally, the channeling modulation is not a very important effect but compared to dibble but still will go through all this thing ok. So, the first thing is scaling scaling means that your devices are being shrunk down or the dimensions of the devices are being reduced you know this is following Moore's law. So, initially you had say 5 micron devices you are scaling down to 2 micron to 1 micron to 0.5 micron to 0 0.2 micron then 90 nanometer you know 65 nanometer these are nodes 32 nanometer there is also 45 nanometer. Now, for example, TSMC is a 7 nanometer node Intel is at 14 nanometer node all these are nodes eventually that you define, but long channel 5 micron 4 micron and all the long channel devices, but now we are very much in the short channel devices and short channel devices have a <coughs> strong effect on the device performance. So, scaling how are you scaling the devices? So, this is a figure I have taken from internet I will give the appropriate credits later on. So, it here you can see now as it increase as the we are going to and now this is a little older plot anyways this is the device size the node 3 micron 2 micron 1.5 over time this is shrinking shrinking we are already at like 14 nanometer node from Intel and 7 nanometer node in the latest iPhone in the latest iPhone XS I guess TSMC is a Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company I guess they say that uh, the Apple has said that they are already having 7 nanometer technology made at TSMC in the iPhone XS I think the latest XS ok. Uh, so, these are these are very advanced devices that are shrinking down and because of this shrink down you have to take into account many of the things if device dimensions are shrunk down then source drain depletion width will become comparable to channel length your gradual channel approximation will fail and your long channel device equations will no longer hold true you will have undesirable electrical behavior because now threshold voltage will no longer be constant with length your current the drain current will not scale with 1 by L or W by L that is a problem and also your drain current will not saturate with VD. So, these are some of the problems that you will definitely face here ok. So, constant field scaling the first scaling rule that was proposed was that the electric field inside the MOSFET at every point should be constant as you scale down. So, you scale the dimensions doping thickness and everything else accordingly such that the electric field inside is constant that will give you a reliable device that was what people thought. So, if you shrink down the channel by a factor of k your thickness has to be also shrunk down by a factor of k your junction depth has to be shrunk down by a factor of k your depletion depth will therefore, get shrunk down by factor of k, but for that you need a doping which is increased by a factor of k right. So, to maintain the same constant electric field you see 
if your transistor length is scaled by k 1 by k uh, then electric field of course will remain same your distance the, the thickness of the oxide also has to be scaled by 1 by k this has to everything will be scaled by 1 by k but doping will increase by k only then your depletion will shrink by 1 by k so these are things but you know people as well they are happy with this but as well people are scaling more and more 80 nanometer 1965 nanometer and so on problems started to arise because this high electric fields now the not high electric field it was very difficult to maintain sustain this constant electric field scaling because kt by q does not scale that is the thermal energy band gap does not scale the built in potential and the band bending at the interface also do not scale and because you are scaling that oxide also because you are scaling the on oxide that oxide is becoming thin so the gate is now leaking as a tun tunneling so that is a bad effect resistances are increasing because you are you know you are in decreasing this thickness so the resistance is also increasing you cannot increase the channel doping indefinitely because then this will break down right that is another problem so there are many other problems and substitution slope and other things will not scale so people realize that you cannot maintain a constant field scaling so people had taken an adoption of you know field and voltage scaling sort of thing but they scale eventually the rule is that you scale different quantities accordingly or appropriately such that the overall device works fine it is not necessary that you have to scale everything by a particular factor you might scale one by one factor you might scale the other thing by another factor gate oxide by another factor bodies effect by other factor you can scale down different factors appropriately such that the overall device works acceptably and simulations and computational models and other things are used uh, but remember that constant field scaling that was proposed initially does not hold true you have to take into account constant field constant voltage the fact that thermal energy and band gap does not scale and so many other things so people try to scale it in a way appropriate way these different parameters so that your overall device performance is not compromised okay the next short channel effect is char charge sharing between source and drain what does this mean it means that when your source and drain come very close to each other the depletion region around the source and drain let me get the laser pointer here the depletion laser this is the depletion region of the source this is the depletion region of the drain when you come very close to each other then this depletion region will start to overlap so the charge sharing happens uh, between the source and the drain and this is the channel depletion you see the depletion below the channel is happening because you are applying some gate voltage here the depletion below the channel which is some charge that is happening here will now be shared between the source and the drain you see this so this is like a trapezium if it is a long channel then this trapezium will look like a rectangle which is fine okay so this is a trapezium because some of the electric field lines uh, that are actually in this depletion are not terminating on the on the channel charge depletion here but they're terminating on the source and drain contact you see these field lines are terminating in simple language the, the depletion charge below the gate should only be charge below the gate but no in short channel device because the source and drain come very close to each other the charge gets all shared up a part of this char charge will be towards the drain depletion a part of this charge will be shared with the source depletion and that is why this becomes like a triangular profile and you can do some simple math and geometry here to essentially find out what is the area under this trapezium uh, that will give you essentially the charge that you have to that is the amount shared and that that is the shard you know that is the this has l this L is the length of the gate but this is trapezium so this is L dash so this is L plus L dash N is the doping WDM is the depletion that is happening this is a subscript for example sorry it is a typo here this is WDM anyways the take home message is that if you do take the charge into account here and that is the extra charge sorry that is the extra charge that you know um, that is the extra charge that you have to now consider when you are talking about charge sharing so this is the this is the this is the qb which is the charge that is stored in this trapezium below the gate otherwise it was a rectangle if it was a large long channel device so it will eventually lead to a change in the threshold voltage also and that threshold voltage change is given by the charge that is stored this zl comes because of the normalization factor the charge that is stored below the gate minus the charge that is actually supposed to have been stored below the gate due to depletion this qna wdm this qna wdm actually term represents the depletion charge if you recall from a few lectures before uh, in MOS capacitor MOSFET QNA WDM essentially represents the maximum depletion charge that will be below the gate but because of charge sharing there will be a trapezium sort of a charge distribution here so what is this charge stored here minus what it should ideally store gives you the difference in the threshold voltage and the threshold voltage turns out to be this quantity which is and RJ here of course comes here RJ is the 
junction depth the depth of the uh, the, the not junction depth this is the depth of the source and drain implants here okay so this is the depth of the source and drain implant that is very important here so it will go as q n a w d m by l c ox for some reason my subscript or superscript doesn't come out here c ox n a is all superscript so it depends on the oxide capacitance it depends on the doping it depends on the depletion it depends on the source drain junction depth this is the junction depth source drain so threshold voltage does have a change here and is a negative change because now you are storing less charge than what you are supposed to store. Ideally, if I take the pen again, ideally you are supposed to have a rectangular profile. Ideally, you are supposed to have a rectangular profile like this and that rectangular profile would have been this charge. Okay? That rectangular profile would have been that charge but unfortunately because it is a short channel device, the source and drain are coming close that is why you have a trapezium profile. So, the difference of that rectangle versus this trapezium in a way is the threshold voltage. This expression is very important by the way, you do not have to memorize but you should know it. Okay, This is WDM, this is Cox, this is Na, this is WDM. Okay, So, that is what the charge sharing is and what is the manifestation? As your channel length is more 2, 3, 4 micron, this is your channel length, you have no difference of the uh, threshold voltage at different drain bias that I mean you know uh, you know that different drain biases threshold biases the voltage is the same. But if you come to short channel device then with different drain voltage at 3 volt or at 1 volt 0 0.1 volt your threshold voltage is much different in one case it is 0.6 volt in one case it is 0.25 or 0.3 volt. So, a lot of difference in a threshold voltage that can affect a device it excuse me it means if I plot ID versus VG if I keep the drain voltage at 3 volt I will get a threshold voltage like that. If I keep the drain voltage at 0 0.1 volt then you know uh, this is 0 0.3 volt for example then I will get it at like this. You see the threshold voltage has changed because of this is VD equal to 3 volt this is VD equal to 0 0.1 volt with different drain bias you will get different threshold that is not a good idea the threshold becomes lower uh, right and that is why you are actually uh, this is uh, an effect of the charge sharing that happens and the last thing that we will study in the in this section and this channeling modulation is not important. The channeling modulation actually means that your I uh, will come to that actually in a bit here. Uh, channeling modulation means that in a MOSFET device if you recall from very long back in a MOSFET device uh, in this you know in this MOSFET device sorry uh, okay in this MOSFET device let me pull out the laser pointer here. This pinch off that has happened now with higher drain voltage this pinch off point moves more and more. So, this channel length becomes lower and lower now that channel length modulation typically does not come into play in a low bigger channel device. In a big channel device this movement with respect to the channel length can be neglected but in a very small channel device when the source and drain are very close then with higher higher and higher pinch off I mean higher and higher drain voltage your pinch off point moves to the left this channel length becomes smaller compared to the original one. So, the current will not saturate it will go like this like this like this okay. that is called channel length modulation but that is not an important effect compared to the dibble and punch through that we will be discussing now. Okay. So, dibble and punch through this I have told you already dibble and punch through essentially what happens is that in a long channel device your source your drain in your gate is like that when you apply drain voltage you have band the band but the drain voltage is not able to influence the amount of electrons that you are injecting from the source that is why the current saturates. But the moment your drain comes very close to the source which is this the drain comes very close to the source whenever you apply drain voltage and you change the band banding like that your drain actually is able to influence the amount of electrons that you are injecting from the source to the gate side uh, to the drain through the via the gate and so this barrier from the source to the gate it is called a barrier you know in injection can be influenced by the drain bias which it ideally should not that is why it is called drain induced barrier lowering it is called dibble drain induced barrier lowering and because of this drain induced barrier lowering your drain current drain voltage will now have, a, have an effect on the drain current that is coming out. So, the current will not saturate the current will not saturate like this you see the current will not saturate that is called dibble for a short channel device. Okay. So, the source then depletion which approaches the channel length then punch. Uh, so, one thing is that this is the dibble that is happening Okay, the barrier at the source side is lowered, but there is another manifestation of this problem by the way this source side barrier lowering and the current increasing with increasing drain bias much to our you know nuisance that is called dibble and it comes at the above threshold condition, but below threshold condition also there will be a problem. When the source and drain come very close to each other the source and la drain lateral depth depletion depths will become comparable to the channel length 
so you your if you recall this figure your depletion from the source and drain side will become so much that this channel length will be overwhelmed by the depletion from the source and drain side in that case what will happen in that case there will be a punch through that will occur because there will be large leakage between the source and the drain as a function of vd which means whenever your source drain source side and drain side depletion region come very close to each other these are high field depletion region like base character depletion region of a bjt if you have very high field depletion region that come very close to each other then electrons might be injected may be swept away by a very injected from the source they may be swept away by a very high electric field to the other side to the drain because it is a very short distance a large amount of current will increase will flow and that is called punch through and as a function of drain bias that punch through can also increase. Please remember that n plus source can inject electron to the depletion which will be sweeping the carriers very fast but the drain is already very close to the source so it will it will eventually go to the drain very immediately you know it is a punch through it is a very large increase in the current that will happen okay. So what will happen is that you will have a short channel device you will have large current that will flow between the source and the drain you will not be able to turn off the channel so your threshold behavior will suffer what i mean is that you see this is id this is vg for a long channel device like 7 micron your current is turning off very nicely by many orders of magnitude but the moment you go to 1.5 micron which is approaching short channel at 1.5 micron the source and drain depletion layers are very close to each other so any electron injected from the source will be swept away by the field very high so the gate will lose control of this channel so you see the pinch off is not happening well this is on this is off you see on and off has such a high ratio but here on and this is off has barely any difference so with short channel devices your threshold condition will become poorer which means your gate will lose control so even if you are sweeping the gate voltage here your current actually is mildly changing only over here the current is changing by many orders of magnitude with a change in gate voltage you are able to turn off the channel here from 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 4 here right or 5 here but with short channel with, with punch through because you have very closely spaced source and drain very scale device your electrons that are injected from source will be swept away the gate will lose control and at 1.5 micron even below your gate voltage will have very small control on the channel in other words the channel will not turn off so this is a punch through effect in sub threshold condition this is a double effect in above threshold condition where the current does not saturate these are the problems of short channel devices okay and apart from that there are also other things like gate oxide breakdown that you should be also aware of not much that you need to study but you know if you have a very thin gate oxide then there might be gate leakage even otherwise there might be energetic electrons that might be injected from the gate and energetic electrons that are injected from the gate will actually have bad detrimental effect or bad effect on the gate oxide. Now apart from that there is another important thing that you should care, be careful when a source and drain are closed and the, you are injecting electrons from the source to the drain side sometimes the energy of the electron may be so high if the channel is low the field is high that they might have the kinetic energy to surmount this barrier the thermionic barrier and leak out to the gate in that case this high energy electron will create impact ionization in the oxide and impact ionization in the oxide if you recall will essentially create leakage current and also will create that dev device uh, you know no, more than leakage actually leakage is not a big deal the big deal is that this high energy electrons that are escaping here when they in impact ionize the oxide layer they will create lot of defects and that will create to reliability problem of the device okay and if elect if impact ionization happens electrons go there then holes may go to the substrate or it may also go to the source there might be a parasitic channel that might form it like a bjt sort of an action so this is an imp important thing you should be aware of that with also scaling and other things there might be undesirable currents and the gate oxide breakdowns that might also happen in terms of reliability problems so with this we end the lecture now and we are uh, more or less done with uh, mosfet okay so we are more or less done with mosfet uh, including short channel effects including uh, your uh, debel punch through your uh, substrate bias effect your sub threshold slope charge sharing how this affects the devices we have had a fairly you know simple description of that i hope you are able to understand the effects the simple equations that i have written down without much derivation uh, those will be uploaded in appropriate notes so don't worry about that so uh, the equations are useful in quickly calculating the for example the change in threshold voltage in uh, in, a, in a short channel device you know if you are shrinking device channel what is the change in the threshold voltage if the threshold voltage changes lot of things will change in the circuit right so it is very important to keep that into account you know keep that into account. So we are more or less done in MOSFET uh, as a topic there are more advanced concepts in MOSFET in terms of short channel effects there are more advanced mathematics they are also like PAUSA double integral that are also more advanced topics. 
uh, many of the things that we are not covering here because the objective of the course is to have more basics of different courses and build up your foundation for device understanding so that you can analyze device you can appreciate how electronic devices work you can also get some basic understanding to score in your gate and other exams uh, so much more advanced concepts are not uh, discussed in detail in this course so we are done at mosfet now what remains is uh, we will start compound semiconductor from the next lecture you have already heard the word compound semiconductor many times in this course we'll go through a couple of lectures on compound semiconductor devices heterostructures is very important heterostructure heterostructure devices we'll study both optical and electric and then we'll go to like things like uh, leds and solar cells photo detectors and then we'll wrap up the course the 30 hours will be completed okay so with that we end up the lecture today i hope to see you in next class with a compound semiconductor okay thank you